Hi, everyone. I'm Paul Lefevre, the Zojo Developer Evangelist. And this time, I'll be talking about web dialogues. So dialog boxes. These are designed to present information to the user. So you often don't want to have a full-blown user interface in them, although some of them you can do that. But generally, they're for presenting some information. They can be modal and non-modal in uh, web apps. And you get a couple options available to you. There's obviously the very simple message box function that you can use to display a very simple dialog box. And there's the more advanced web dialog class. You can learn more about each of those in the user guide here at this URL, which I'll include in the video notes. So a little bit about message box. It's very simple. You just can display a bit of text and have a single button. You can't really customize anything other than the text that you're being that's that you're showing. And the UI for the message that appears is controlled by the browser. You don't really have any control over that. So you're not going to be able to make it look fancy or anything other than what you're getting by the browser. Generally, it's not really recommended for use. So that's, that's what it looks like. Like I said, pretty simple. Uh, it can be handy for maybe, you know, simple testing and showing something up on the, the screen, but it's part of your main app's real user interface. Probably best to avoid. So instead, you want to use the web dialog. This is a class, web dialog class. And it's a separate project item. So you would add your web dialogs to your project and then design them how you want. You can add your controls, lay it out how you think is necessary, change its size, do whatever you need. You'll want to make sure you have some way for it to close, of course. So typically, that's a button of some kind. And there are a couple ways that you can uh, you can display your web dialogs. They can be displayed as a sheet, which is a little uh, dialog window that slides down from the address bar of the web browser. And that actually works on all platforms. It's not Mac specific. And you can have what's called the standard modal web dialog. So this is a, a dialog that you know, just kind of sits on the page above everything else. And both sheet and the modal type are modal. So that means when they're up on the screen, you can't interact with the page that's behind it. And there's also a third option for display, and that's a palette. And this is not modal. Uh, you can freely move it around the screen, and you can still interact with the web page that's behind it. So this here is a, a regular looking dialog. This is a sheet, and you can see it's at the top of the browser window. It, uh, animation would have had it slide down there. And then a palette has a uh, title bar, so you can move it around, and it has its own close button. And to use a dialog, you, uh, you can do it one of two ways. You can create your dialog, add it to your project, and then you can just drag it onto the, the web page layout where you want to use it or you can create the dialogue dynamically from code and call it that way. When the dialogue is closed, its dismissed event is called. And that's where you can check what button was pressed or continue any action uh, that, that you're uh, working towards. Because it's important if you're coming from the desktop uh, development world to realize that uh, displaying a dialogue in a web app does not stop your code when you call the show method to display the dialog. All the code in your method is going to continue to run right through. And this is an artifact of the way that web apps work with their asynchronous client server design. So that's why the dismissed event is called when the dialog is actually closed. So if you're in the habit of writing a giant method and in the middle uh, have that method essentially be paused by displaying a modal dialog on the desktop, Instead, on the web, you would actually split that code and put the rest of the code after the dialog display in the dismissed event so that it can run 
after your dialogue is dismissed, which is what you want. All right, so let's switch over to Zojo and look at a couple examples. All right, so this here is the web dialogues example project, and it's gonna show you the three different type of dialogues, modal sheet and palette. So first of all, we can look at those here in the navigator. So this here is the example of a sheet dialogue. You can see it's a web dialogue, and its type here is set as sheet. And you know, it just has a label on it, has a couple buttons. The code in the buttons sets the selected button property. That's a property here to itself. So that, that way you can check the property to see which of the buttons was clicked. And then it closes the dialogue. Though not, nothing really fancy is happening here, but it's just essentially uh, some boilerplate code so that you can tell which button was clicked in the dismissed event later. And if you go to the, uh, the sheet dialog here, you can see that it appears on the shelf because it's not actual a visual part of the layout. So when I would drag it from here onto the layout, it would just appear on the shelf. And you can see it's gonna have events. And in this case, the dismissed event is just setting a label on the page to be the caption of the selected button and selected button is the property that's on the sheet dialog. So all that's doing is just updating the label, telling you which button was clicked. The modal dialog is pretty much the same, slightly different layout. You can see it's got the modal type. Uh, the code that's on it is the same. And the code that's here is also the same. So I'm gonna run it real quick so we can see what those two look like. So you can see the modal popped up here. It's in the center of the page. I can't, I'm trying right now, but I can't click behind the dialog to do interact with the page in any way. And then I have to close the dialog by clicking one of the buttons, which is displayed here. The sheet works the same, except it's gonna slide down from the top bar here. And then also I cannot interact with anything behind it. And then when it goes away, I can, of course. And then let's just look at what the palette looks like, and then we'll take a look at its code, which is a little ever so slightly different. So the palette is floating here. I can move it however I want. I can resize it. And I can still interact with the buttons on here. So I could display something else. I can click the button here. And you can see I have the code set up to not close the palette when one of these buttons is clicked because typically you will continue to use the, uh, the palette over and over. So you're not necessarily gonna want it to close each time a button is clicked. And then when you click the close button here in the title bar, the palette will be closed, and then that's what gets displayed here. So let's look at that code. So this is the palette. Again, it's a dialog. The type here is set to palette. It also has a yes and no button. And the action here is a little bit different. is uh, what this code is doing is checking the parent of this dialogue, so the parent page, making sure that it's a dialogue page, which is our parent page that we have here. And if it is, it's directly manipulating the label on there to set the caption to the button that was clicked. And it's not calling close to close the dialogue, it's just updating the caption. And that's the same code that you see here on uh, the yes button. So actually looking at that now, it doesn't look like the selected button property is actually needed here in this case. Because what we're doing in the sample dialog that's sitting out here on the page is in the dismissed event, that's actually called when you click the close button on the palette because that's what will close it. We didn't have any other way to close it. So here we can just specifically 
set the text to say the palette was closed. And we don't care which button was pressed now because we've been updating the button presses as they happen. So that's how the palette is set up. So you can see three types of dialogues. The first two, modal and sheet, pretty equivalent. Uh, really, you're just going to use the one that you're probably most comfortable with. Um, and no, not really any behavioral difference other than where they appear on the page. And the palette is the one that actually gives you some additional functionality. You can have multiple palettes on a page. You can still interact with the page when it's open. So a bit more flexibility there. Now let's take a look at this example project here, which shows you how you can create a dialogue in code and display it. So instead of dragging the dialogue from the navigator onto the layout, like we've done here to get it in the, uh, the shelf, this code here in the dynamic dialogue button, we'll just kind of create it the old fashioned way. And it's really just three steps, but you need to know what they are, right? So first, you create a new instance of our dialog, which is login dialog. It's just a variable here for that. And then here is the add handler command, which is going to essentially map the dismissed event of our dialog instance, so the dialog's dismissed event, to a method. And login dismissed is a method that we have here on the page. So that's all this line of code is saying is, since we created this right now in code, we don't really have a way to get access to the dismissed event. So let's send along the dismissed event to a method that we put on the page. If we take a look at the method, the only tricky thing you have to do when you do set up the method is just provide an initial parameter that matches what it is uh, that is being called. So in this case, it's a login dialog. So we just set that up as the parameter. That way you'll have a reference to it if you need it. And in this case, it is using the reference. And then in the code, uh, the, uh, it's checking an accepted property, which we have here on the dialog. And that's uh, just set to true when OK is clicked. And if that property is set to true, then a, we use another dialog here, a message box to say that the user clicked. Okay. And that is pretty much it. So if I run this here, that's the standard dialog shows how you, how it would work normally. And you'll notice that if I bring that one up repeatedly, it's remembering the information that I typed there the first time because it's not creating a new instance each time. It's just reusing the one that's on the page. And that's one reason that dynamic dialogue can be helpful because when you do it, it's creating a new instance every time, at least the way our code is. So you can see it does the same thing. Works the same way. And called the method to display the message and if I create it again, because it's a brand new instance, it's not gonna pull in anything that I happened to type there before. And Edwin is reminding me that on the code here that is doing the add handler, I probably should have a remove handler somewhere to remove the handler. Uh, so that I don't end up with a, a bunch of handlers that are set up that are no longer used. So in this particular case, the uh, the dismissed thing should probably have the remove handler in here. I'll have to check that, but it probably makes sense that once you've run this, you don't need the handler anymore, so you can remove it. So I'm going to update the uh, example that's included with Zojo with that extra little line of code. Thank you, Edwin. All right, so that's dialogues for web projects. You can see not too difficult a concept.
And can you believe it? It's 2019 already. So I am reminding everyone that the Zojo Developer Conference is coming up soon, May 1st to 3rd, actually. And it's in Miami, Florida this year, which would be a great location, nice and warm. Uh, if you were actually at the Zojo Developer Conference last year in April, it was in Denver. It actually snowed one day. Well, it won't be snowing in Miami. It should be nice, hot, sunny, and the hotel is right here on the water, the Marriott on the left. So a great location with a great view. If you register by February 22nd, you can save $200 on the registration price. And you can head on over to the zojo.com slash XDC site to check out the full session schedule, list of all the sessions, all the presenters, and what's going on at what day and what times and all that good stuff. We'd love to see you in Miami. All right, as usual, I can be reached pretty easily via email, paul at zojo.com. Love hearing from people using Zojo. And of course, you can find me at Twitter, at Lefevre. And if you haven't recently, be sure to head on over to zojo.com slash download to check out the latest release of Zojo. Zojo is released pretty frequently, about once a quarter. And as long as you have a current license, you can use the latest release with your projects. But even if you don't have a current license, you can download the new version, try it out, read the release notes, see what's new, and check out any new features that have been added. And I encourage you to do so. And I think that about wraps everything up for this time. So I want to thank everyone for attending. Have a great day.